Good day to colleagues and friends from all around the world. Today is Sir John's birthday, and I am thrilled to add my own welcome to all of you who have joined the Global Scientific Conference on Human Flourishing. Sir John's life began in the, in the United States, in a state called Tennessee. From an early age, he was allowed to explore, first his local surroundings, then to college in New England, graduate school in the United Kingdom, and an amazing trip around the world where he came face to face with different forms of business and commerce, different religious traditions, and places where humans flourished in ways he had never experienced. This trip around the world helped my grandfather appreciate the wisdom and insights that existed outside of the United States and outside of the West. And when he sold his mutual fund business in 1992, he dedicated himself to exploring the mysteries of the natural world and of the human spirit by creating philanthropic entities to carry out his philanthropic vision for human flourishing. Like many concepts, human flourishing is something that we need to study and to understand. There may be different ways to describe human flourishing. We need to know more about how to measure human flourishing. We need to recognize the different domains of flourishing, which include well-being across many aspects of life, including, especially for Sir John Templeton, spiritual flourishing, love, forgiveness, beauty, and purpose. It is possible to research all of these concepts. And so I invite you on behalf of my grandfather and his mission to make the world a better place, to explore human flourishing, to learn about the research that we are funding, and to understand the application of the findings from such research to the human experience in the 21st century. Sir John said that we can help create a more meaningful and fruitful world by our thoughts, feelings, consciousness, and actions. We can reflect that inner realization of unlimited love, compassion, kindness, honesty, integrity, strength, and a sense of our purpose in life to every purpose, person, and situation in our area of experience. I hope this conference sparks more conversation, more research, and a greater commitment to human flourishing. We begin by watching the trailer to Contrarian, a documentary film about Sir John Templeton. You can find the full version at templeton.org. Thank you for joining, and thank you to Andrew Sarazen and our colleagues at the Templeton World Charity Foundation for drawing attention to the science of human flourishing. When you see the many scandals in the investment world, when you see the long career of Sir John, so principled. Sir John Templeton was honest. John was the ultimate contrarian. He pioneered global investing. He looked all over the world for investments. John Templeton was way ahead of his time in the emerging markets. John's whole theory was you buy bargains. Every crisis, John Templeton was in the midst of it. I was there in 1987. People were panicked beyond comprehension. John, John, what do we do? And he said, let's go find stocks to buy. The glass was always half full, John. He was not interested in the trappings of wealth. He traveled the economy. He was very conscious of not wasting a dollar or a minute of time. It was work, work, work. He predicted the housing bubble bursting. He was the first rock star investor. He had the golden touch. He started to become more spiritually curious. The big questions were always bigger than big. Was heaven possible? I've rarely met somebody who had more curiosity than he. So he wanted to gather around him heretical, unusual, imaginative thinkers to think with him about the great problems. He was a Tennessee mystic. The scientific community would say, oh, you know, John, you can't possibly do scientific research on love. There's just nothing there. He expected some criticism. John Templeton stuck to his convictions through hell and high water. But it all boils down to that last question. Why are we here? How little we know, how eager to learn. He cared about doing something that could have a major revolutionary effect. He will never be forgotten, and he will never be outdone. 